How's it going everyone? Well, it's been on the to-do list for a long time, and I'm finally answering the question I get asked more than any other, what type of bass is that? My bass was made by Ross Anderson, a luthier based in Melbourne, Australia, appropriately named the Anderson Bass. I bought it back in 2010 during my uni days, when Ross brought two of them down from Melbourne to the School of Music here in Canberra. Ross was around 70 years old at the time, and I believe he's no longer making them today. It set me back around 3500 Aussie dollars. It should have cost me around 4000 but Ross was in a generous mood, and you know, poor uni student. It's similar to a Czechese bass, in that it has a standard size 34 inch fingerboard with a smaller body, making it more portable than the favoured three quarter sized basses. The combined body and neck length were designed to fit across the back seat of even the smallest cars, without having to lower either the passenger or back seats. You can also take it on public transport, which I have done many times. This always gets a few curious looks from fellow commuters, which is why Ross embroidered a nice message onto the front of the carry bag. Not everyone reads it though, and I still get people asking me if it's a cello. The carry bag is very nice. The shoulder strap is made from a seat belt and is very easy to cart around. Just picture me wearing a shirt, dress pants and nice shoes, rather than my super casual gym pants and uggies. It also came with a fiberglass flight case for long distance traveling, and a stand, so your viewers have something nice to look at in your videos. Currently I'm using a Realist pickup that was given to me when I first bought the base, although I don't remember the exact model for it. I used a Shala 411 magnetic pickup for a long time, which produced a very clean and clear sound. To be honest, I'm not really a big fan of how the Realist sounds, so I'll probably switch back to a magnetic pickup down the track. Like many travel basses like this, the acoustic volume is insufficient, so amplification is a must. I run my bass through a 100 watt Roland Cube amplifier. I may go deeper into the rest of my gear in a future video. Although amplification is necessary for live performances, I do prefer the bass's acoustic sound for my videos. I mic it up with my Zoom H4n recorder and pull the audio straight into my videos completely raw. I have my action set fairly low to make pizzicato playing easier, plus I prefer the tone I get out of a lower action. My bass has a few knocks and dings from years of lugging it around and bumping into things, but it's held up pretty well. To wrap up this video, I do like the sound of my bass, but it really doesn't compare to the 3 quarter size double. It just doesn't have the same satisfying bottom end or growling acoustic tone but you really should expect that from travel bases to some degree. Like I said earlier, to my knowledge Mr. Anderson is no longer making these bases, so if you're in the market for a travel base, I would recommend looking into the Czechies. The acoustic tone is much closer to that of a three quarter, with a minimal loss of acoustic volume. Having said this, the Anderson bass really shines with a good amp and pickup combo. I've had many people come up to me after a gig and say how fat my bass sounds for such a small body. So I hope that gives you some insight into my double bass. I get this question more than any other. Well, almost.